Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Alyssa. I am a wife and a mama to an almost two year old little girl. And I make videos here on my channel every week, lifestyle videos, motherhood videos. I'm also totally blind, so I talk about blindness and motherhood and disabilities and all of that. Um, so if you like that kind of thing, be sure to subscribe. Today's video is going to be a little harder. Okay, it's probably gonna be the hardest video I've ever made, honestly. I wanna to talk to you guys about something that is very hard to talk about. Um, it's been on my heart to share with you. This is not a typical video that I would post on my channel. So if you don't like heavy topics, you probably should just click off of this video. Just warning you, it's, um, it's gonna get heavy today. I just, I, I have first of all skipped a week of uploading and I'm sorry for that. And that's partly because I have been trying to decide if I wanna do this video. <laughs> Um, and I, it's just taken me a long time to like muster up the courage to make this video today. So I'm finally doing it. I have my husband sitting here with me. You can't see him, but he's here. I'm holding his hand <laughs> because I need support for this video. It's going to be hard. So now that I've scared you all, um, let's begin. So basically, um, I just want to talk to you about it. I can talk to you guys. Really, I can't. <laughs> I want to talk to you guys today about something that, like I said, that's been on my heart. Um, and it's a topic of something that I've seen a lot on social media. If you guys have been on social media for the last few weeks or maybe month, then you, it's probably no surprise to you. You've probably seen a lot of talk about, um, human trafficking, sexual abuse in children, pedophilia, all those things. Um, and unfortunately something that I have noticed on social media lately is that pedophilia is um, trying to become normalized by some people. Now, I don't know all the specifics on it. Um, there are a lot of people against it, which is great, that are standing up and like saying, no, this is disgusting, this is wrong, you know. Um, but pedophilia is, let's just, I'm just gonna start off by saying this, you guys, we're gonna get real, real quick, okay? Pedophilia is not a sexual orientation. Um, and that's what I've been seeing, that it's starting to become normalized. And that is, it is not okay and it's not normal. And um, human trafficking is way more common than I knew. Um, I was doing some research a while back and child trafficking, you know, children are sold and um, they are sex slaves for years and years and years. And you guys, that's horrible. That grieves the heart of God, okay? This is not okay. And I, I know that most of you know this is going on, but to be quite honest with you, I knew it was going on, but I didn't know the extent. I didn't know how common it was. I didn't know um, that it's so, there's so many children missing all of the time. I, I just, these things were not known to me. And also I didn't know how common pedophilia was. Like I know it's a thing, but I didn't realize that there are a lot of sexual abuse in children that happens all of the time. And so I just wanna bring up this issue because you guys, it is such an important issue. I know there's a lot of debating on social media these days. <laughs> there's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, and I'm not gonna get into all the topics that <laughs> are covered on social media because it's just, a lot of it is just irrelevant. But this is the most relevant thing I have seen. And it's something that I, I don't, I'm not into like debating on Facebook. I'm really not. Sometimes I find myself accidentally getting into it, but honestly, this is something I stand for. I stand against, I should say. And if I see somebody posting an article, you know, against human trafficking or sexual abuse in children, I will share it. And by the way, there's a hashtag um, called, it's hashtag save the children. And um, temporarily Facebook removed it, meaning that it was blocked and you could not see any posts made by that hashtag. So that was very disturbing. Um, now there has been enough complaining that I think, and enough pushback, thankfully, that I think it's back. Um, so you can do hashtag save the children and you'll see lots of posts. But you guys, save the children is a huge thing right now. And um, a couple of weeks ago, I don't remember what day it was, but there was like a human trafficking or child trafficking awareness day that, that was, I forget what day it was, but it was recently. And so I feel like I need to make this video. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because unfortunately, stories of um, sexual abuse in children are way too common. And unfortunately, I am someone who has experienced uh, sexual abuse as a child. Um, and 
I don't like talking about this, as you guys can tell. Again, this is really hard to talk about. Not very many people know this, so I honestly fought making this video for days, weeks, because I was just like, I don't want to talk about this. This is very vulnerable. So yeah, if you don't like this kind of stuff, please click off right now, because I'm going to get vulnerable right now. Um, and it's very hard for me, so if I get if my voice gets shaky or I get sidetracked, um, I'm sorry. And I don't have any notes, because I my, my Braille note taker broke, so... Yeah, I'm a little scattered, so bear with me. But basically, you guys, I wanted to share with you a little bit of my experience because unfortunately it's it's very much like many other experiences and many other stories. Um, so when I was young, I was about three, three and a half. Um, sorry for the grandfather clock. <laughs> I think it has a good effect though. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that you, <laughs> you hear this in a lot of my videos, so I think it's a fun distraction. Anyways. Back to the heavy topic. Um, so when I was about three and a half or so, um, whatever the preschool age is, um, I went to, my parents put me in a Christian preschool. Um, and it was a great school. Um, it was good, you know. But I went there and um, basically um, there was a male teacher at that school. Um, there were also, you know, female teachers as well, assistants and stuff like that. But um, apparently they weren't always in the room at all times, which I think it's much different now. I think that there has to be, if I'm not mistaken, more than one adult in the room. Um, I don't know, correct me on that, but I have no idea. But basically back then, um, this teacher was alone with us um, during nap times. And during nap time, because back then they used to have nap time. They, I don't think they do that anymore, but when we were in preschool, they would. Um, and so the kids would take a nap at school and basically for that entire school year i um i ugh. so basically i sorry guys i was like hiding something without even realizing i was hiding it um i was being sexually abused by this teacher um i was molested i was yeah just treated poorly um and it was behind closed doors, obviously. No one, you know, no one saw it or anything like that. Um, but basically I kept it in. I didn't tell my parents because I was told not to. And a lot of times when there is pedophilia and stuff like that, the pedophiles will discourage the children somehow in their way from telling their parents. So I didn't, um, but so I kept quiet about it. I was also little, so I didn't really understand what was going on, I'm sure. Um, but eventually I did tell my parents, um, the Lord was with me and somehow, I don't know, I just did. I was willing to face the fear or something, but I told my parents and it was dealt with. And fortunately there was justice done, um, which is good. Like that's a good thing. Um, so I'm not here to like say negative things about anybody. I'm not going to share details of what happened. It's just not, it, it's my story and it, it's, I just don't want to do that. So I'm going to spare you lots of details. Trust me. But basically that's what happened. Um, I was mistreated, violated, and um, by a teacher at a Christian school. And like, you're probably thinking like, what? At a Christian school? Yeah, you guys, at a Christian school. Like, it, that doesn't mean anything. Um, and so, like I said, it, it was taken care of. But there were a lot of repercussions. And as you can imagine, for someone who was hurt like that, as a child, um, I became very, very much afraid of men. Um, I would just cower. I wouldn't talk to, I went from being a pretty opened child to just closing off to certain people um, and just being very nervous all the time. Um, and, and one of the reasons why I'm sharing this, you guys, is to, because I don't just wanna share my story just to share. Like, this is not easy, as you guys can tell by how rambly I am and how scatterbrained I am right now. <laughs> uh, but I feel like, this is important to share with you because I want to raise awareness. I want to let you guys know that this is common, more common than people realize. Cause people don't talk about this, you guys. Like before a month ago or whatever it was, when people started talking about this, like I never heard people's stories about this kind of stuff. I never heard, you know, posts or read posts about pedophiles being exposed or normalized or, you know, people's sexual abuse stories or trafficking. I didn't hear any about any of this. So now that it's being exposed, I just feel like it's a good time to expose it and to let you guys know that it happens to way more people than you think. And um, I am 29 years old and I still have repercussions from what happened. Now, I will say that I 
the Lord is amazing and I am, I am a lot better than I was. In fact, I, I have been restored. I have, in a lot of ways, I've been healed. I've gone to therapy over the years. Um, I've gotten help and I have an amazing husband that I'm married to who is super supportive and has helped me through a lot because I'll be honest, when we first got married, there was a lot of repercussions that we had to deal with and stuff we had to work through. But, you know, as you can imagine, but like he is so amazing and supportive and the Lord has used him to help me and, you know, as well as therapy and as well as just the word of God and, and just, um, luckily, like, fortunately, the Lord is so good. Like he's blocked a lot of things out of my memory. Like I obviously know what happened just because I know, but I don't have to think about like how it felt anymore or anything. Cause a lot of that is, was blocked out um, by the Lord, I believe. So I don't even dwell on it anymore. Honestly, I don't think about it often. And to be honest, like until these posts started coming out on Facebook, like I, I didn't really, I wasn't really thinking about it that much. But then like once I was reading this stuff, I was just like, oh my gosh, these poor, I just hurt for these children who not only have sexual abuse stories like mine, because unfortunately a lot of them do, um, and it's happening behind their parents' backs every day, or, but I even feel worse for children who are like taken away from their parents sold and they live lives like this and there's no way out they don't they can't go home to their parents every night they can't tell their parents because they're gone and so that's even more de and devastating and of course it's all devastating and like to think that now i'm a mama and i have a girl who's almost the age i was when this happened like this is just it just disgusts me and that's why i have to i have to share this you guys i have to raise awareness i have to warn you if your parents out there and you have young children please 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 look for the signs i'm not saying you're gonna know because sometimes your kids just won't tell you and you won't know and it's not your fault if you don't know what's happening but if your kid just because your kid is going to a school that you believe is safe or because your kid is hanging out with friends you believe are safe it doesn't mean they're safe okay so i just want you to know this happens all the time just be looking out for signs i'm going to share with you a couple right now if your child is suddenly anxious suddenly having nightmares every night and they haven't before if they're you know talking about weird things if they're asking you interesting questions if they're suddenly scared of someone in your family if they're just if they're backing up from people and it, it doesn't mean someone in your family has is guilty i'm just saying they can like i was scared of people in my family that weren't even guilty so like it, it can manifest in so many different ways and so i just want to let you guys know if you see that in your children just please like <laughs> Have an open relationship with them, even if they're three years old, four years old, like I was. Like, just try to talk with them about it. Ask them things. Figure out how their day is going. If they just say, oh, it was fun, like, get more information out of them. Um, really know the teachers that your kids are with. Don't be afraid to ask questions at your school. Don't be afraid to be involved and be that helicopter parent, honestly, at your school. Like, I, don't be afraid to volunteer in their class as much as you can. Like, be there. Be present. Um... If they're going to a friend's house, like make sure you really know those parents and you're super comfortable. Honestly, I just don't let my daughter go anywhere without me unless I am like, unless it's like basically family and I, I know the person really well. Like I, I honestly have never really left her like very, very, very rarely. Um, and so it's just one of those things you have to be aware of. And unfortunately it's out there and it happens. And um, I just want to let you guys know that yes, it happened to me. Um, is it because I was blind? I don't know. It could have made me more vulnerable, sure, but I don't think so. I think it happens to kids whether they're blind or not. Um, kids, unfortunately, the innocent are the most vulnerable and the easiest targets, which is so just awful and disgusting. And ugh. anyways, you guys, I i don't even know why. I, oh, I know I am sharing this. It's not easy. I'm sorry for the heavy topic, but I'm sharing it because I want you guys to know that we need to stand up against this. And if you are somebody who um, has been seeing posts that pedophilia should be normalized, please fight against that. Please stand up against that. Pedophilia is not a sexual orientation. It should not be celebrated. It should not be normalized. They should not be released from prison um, because of COVID. Like I've been hearing about that. Like, come on, like, no, that should not happen. Um, it, there needs to be justice brought to these people who have not had the justice when they've done this. Um, and so I just want to raise awareness. I want you guys to know that, yes, I've been through it, but I am completely okay now. God is so, he's redeemed me, like I said. Um, and I want to just help other people. And I want my story to help other people. And so if, if you have struggled, if your child has struggled with it, if you think your child might be in that situation, you're just not sure about the signs, you're not sure, you know, what to look for, whatever, please reach out to me. Like, I wanna be there for you. I wanna help you through this. This is not an easy thing, um, but unfortunately it's a common thing. 
and more common than we realize it's like in our backyards you guys seriously um please keep your kids with you please don't let them out of your sight ever um like i said unless you like really know the person but try not to let them out of your sight like try to always be aware of your surroundings and their surroundings and the people that you like are with and just you know god gives parents discernment and instinct and all i have to say is please trust that trust your discernment trust your instinct when your kids are little because they can't speak for themselves you know when they get to be like teenagers and stuff like yeah they can they can let you know they can speak for themselves they can tell you if they feel comfortable or not but if they're younger like that they don't know and the other thing is like don't be afraid to have open conversations with your children about um what's okay and what's not um like i don't want to get too vulnerable but like what you know what's okay for like like let them know don't be afraid to have the embarrassing conversations like we don't we don't let anyone touch you here no one should touch you here nobody should talk about you with you about this you know thing and don't be afraid to like let them know about you know their bodies and how they work and and you know how god made their bodies and that their bodies are sacred and they're treasures and they're not to be touched or messed with or talked about or just don't be afraid to even if your kid is three or four like have those conversations be open as parents don't be afraid of those conversations don't think like oh it's taboo to talk about private you know body parts or whatever like no god made our bodies and it's not taboo to make our ch children aware of things um, i'm sorry this if this video is kind of explicit i really am um and if it gets removed or anything like that i yeah it's fine but like you guys, I just really want you guys to be aware of this. Um, and this was hard for me, but I know it was it was necessary. So I appreciate you listening. I'm sorry it was rambly. Um, know that I'm okay. I'm only sharing my story because, like I said, it's, it's just so common. And I want to be a voice to stand up for our children, to save our children, um, to raise awareness that not everybody is who they seem. Um, and so if there is any suspicion about anybody, if there's any rumors going around about somebody that you know, just don't be afraid to investigate. Um, don't be afraid to be investigators. Like parents should be investigators, you know, if you have anything at all, any question at all. So, and just love your kids, love on them. Let them know, let them know that you're a safe place too. Cause I feel like that's huge. Like if they feel like you're a safe place, then even if this pedophile is telling them, don't tell your parents, they're going to go to you because they're going to feel safe and, um, hopefully not afraid. And obviously there is fear involved. Like I was afraid. I was afraid of a lot of things back then. Um, and it took me a while to get over a lot of those fears. Honestly, just over the last few years, like I feel like I'm finally free of a lot of those, of pretty much all of those things. Um, and so just be on the lookout and just be aware, but yet trust the Lord. Um, if you know the Lord, he is wonderful. And um, if you don't know the Lord, um, reach out to me. We can talk about that because this, I couldn't get through all of this that I've been through if it wasn't for Jesus. He's so good and he can also give you the discernment and like give you peace or not, if, if you don't have peace about something, you can trust the Lord. If you do, then trust the Lord um, and just ask him to walk with you and ask him to help you through this and ask him to give you wisdom and to help you to navigate the relationship with your children. And you know, if you have to talk to them or just, you know, he will help you through that. So you can do it. Parents, you're doing a great job. Don't feel scared, but just be aware because this is real and this is out there. So please just help me in standing up for our kids. Anytime I see an article, I try to share it if I can. Um, on Facebook, I try to raise awareness. Um, this is the first time I've ever shared my story publicly, so please bear with me and have grace with me if it was all over the place. But um, if, the, if you need to share this with someone else to encourage them, do so. And the one thing I wanna encourage you with is that you can get through this. If your kid has been sexually abused, they can heal because you're looking at someone right now who is completely different, 100%. And I am restored and renewed and it doesn't bother me anymore. It doesn't plague me anymore. I've forgiven the person who hurt me. It was hard to do, but I've forgiven him because that's what the Lord would want me to do. And I don't, you know, I want to be free of that. And part of freedom is forgiving. And so I have, it's taken me a while, but it's, it's happened. And so I am, a brand new person a brand new creation in christ and it has not it, it's not affecting me anymore so th i'm just a story of hopefully hope for you guys out there and if you've been through this yourself 
and you still haven't healed, that's okay. It takes time, but just know that it's possible and you can reach out to me, like I said, anytime. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry for this heavy topic. Hopefully, well, next week's video will be back to my regular content and it will be lighter. So again, if you like lifestyle motherhood videos, things like that, be sure to subscribe, give this a thumbs up if you liked it, but if you didn't like it, I totally understand. <laughs> And thank you again for all your support and for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!